Hi, welcome to 151 Garage. I'm Sean. I'm Jill. That Shadow. And today we're going to actually work on the Bronco's alignment issue. So what we want to show you is right now, this right here is actually pretty good. Uh, it needs to come out a little bit more in there, but that's more later. It takes two paint sticks right here and barely two paint sticks right here. So what we'll do is what, what we are going to do is remove the fender, loosen up the bolts to be able to align this one. Cause as you can tell, there's a big alignment issue right here. Pull this fender out just a little bit when we put it on and then push everything back in. Now we're not going to remove the bolts. We're not going to remove the door. We're going to break them just enough so we can move the door back and forth until we get to the point where we like it. Then we'll remove the fender again and tighten up the bolts and verify everything's done. Now the thing is right now that's misaligned a little bit, not bad. This right here is a little bit misaligned from factory. So it sticks out just a little bit. It's no big deal. But what we're wanting to know is when I align this one, how far that one's going to be off. And then when we align that one, how far that's going to be off. So we want to make sure there's no daisy chain effect of misalignment all the way down. And we want to fix that today before we go figure out the uh, alignment for that and alignment for that for all the gaps like this. So I'll put you on the tripod and uh, go from there. So if you guys want to know, there's two bolts that go this way that will align it forward and back or in and out. Plus you have these that you can align it this way, uh, this way right here. We just need to align it in the top side. So we are going to loosen those bolts just enough to we can move it back and forth a little bit with some pressure. And then we'll go from there. So we'll you don't adjust want to it. He man these panels because these are the aluminum panels and you don't want to bend them because they're a pain in the butt to fix. So be gentle when you press in on these. Don't manhandle it. So as you can see, and we'll show you regular, you can actually pull this in and out. There, I'm gonna take them off for a second. Okay, so as you can tell, look around the outer edge of that if you can see it can you see that okay yeah now watch the gap you can move that back and forth as you can tell right around this bolt you can see kind of a silver spot you can pull this out and it'll it was right about there but i can push it back in to align the fender tighten it up and right now it has just enough tension to actually keep the tight, uh, keep the uh, ability to keep it this way. So when I do put the fender back on, I can adjust it however I need and then tighten it back up once I pull the fender back off. So throw it back on the tripod and go from there. Okay, hang on guys. All right. You're gonna help me? You're gonna help me? No, am I putting this on wrong? Okay, 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 I'll put it on right. Let it down slowly right here. That way we don't have any contact. Now you can drop it down. Okay, drop it down now. So this is too wide. That's too wide. Actually, I need to go in a little bit with this. 
an awesome way of measuring. It doesn't matter what you measure with. It's the fact that you have the same going from one side to the other. You don't have to do a ruler or anything like that. These right here are consistent. All are consistent. Through. So you use the same ones to be able to make sure the gaps are the same on top and bottom. You'll never go wrong. It does not matter. I don't know how <laughs> high. It does not matter how big they are. It's just as long as they're consistent. You use the same ones. <laughs> Sorry for the jiggle. Our dog hit the tripod. <laughs> Sorry, we got a helper here. It's right here. Hi. So as you guys can't tell, I uh, <laughs> taped this up so we that. didn't open it by accident and mess up the door. Yeah, so. we'll mess up the fender too. Yeah, we're gonna make sure everything's protected. Um, oh. So it's not connecting to anything, except for the dog, Doby. <laughs> um, got plenty of room right there. It's just the tape connecting to that right there which isn't going to be bad. It does need to go in just a little bit more. Here, I'll get you guys but... a little bit closer. <clears throat> so as you can tell, it's close right there, but when you, I do have to push it in just a little bit more and I'll do that when the door's off or when the door is open, I can undo it. Now, this right here, is pretty good. The bottom's pretty nice, pretty close. But this right here actually came in perfect. So I don't have to align this because this is already aligned. This right here fixed itself. When I pushed this in, this gap sticking out actually worked out perfectly. What about perfectly aligned? Hmm? What perfectly aligned? This right here. Oh. That's what you were talking oh, about. Oh, this right here. So right now, let me start from the front. With this pushed in flat, it's real nice. Uh, down here, I'll work with down here just a little bit, see if I can pull the bottom out. But right now, it's, it's really good. Um, this right here is a lot better as long as I push it in. Right now, it's still kind of loose because there's still tension, so it still kind of pops out a little bit. But right here, where there is a gap, it was this panel, the front door was sticking out just a little bit. It's actually really nice. And this right here means I don't have to adjust this door to align this because this is already aligned. So it works out. Uh, let me get okay, back on the tripod you go. So how does it feel to you from here to here? Good. Check the rest of them. <clears throat> it's out a little bit here, bowed out a little bit. A little bit on that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll push this in just a little bit. Or do I need to move it out that way? I can move that side out. Does that feel good to you right there? Yeah. 
So check up there, can it go in just a little bit without messing up this? Or well, that's good. The gap looks okay. I wouldn't. Well, I'm not talking about the gap. I'm talking. I can push this in just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, just tweak it just a tad. Check that door. Make sure it's not hitting anywhere. It's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's good. This sticks out. So what he's doing now that you really can't see, he's adjusting the hinges on the rear. There. Because we still have a, a, a little bit of a gap issue from where these two doors meet. So he's popping this one out. I'm popping head. the bottom one of this one out. This right here is perfect. Absolutely. That whole front piece is perfect. This right here, I have a gap right here. So what I'm doing is there's two hinges, one here and one about here. There's two bolts on this one, one bolt on this one. So all I'm doing is undoing this bolt and pulling the door out on the bottom and then I'll retighten it. Now, it's a lot better now, but I still want it out a little bit more. Oh yeah. All right, Good so there. there's two ways that you can check the gaps. And break you guys back down. I'm gonna get you down to my eyesight level. Now, okay, then we're looking at this line right here, this reflection. You see it all the way down? Put your uh, finger where the gap is. Where his finger is at, you will be able to tell by just looking at it if it's out or in or flush. That's another way you can check it. Yeah, Other so than, come over here and point this way and I'll show you I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, hang on. <clears throat> so give you kind of an understanding. This right here is pretty pretty nice. Uh, you want to show them? Come here. <laughs> <laughs> this right here is pretty nice. Now, what you're looking for is to make sure your door isn't sticking out like that. Like you have a huge gap there. And, and when I'm talking was. gap, I'm talking this way. This gap is good. Yeah. This, the alignment this way is what I'm worried about. And that's what I was feeling and what I was looking at it earlier. So that's what he was fixing. So we brought this door out this way just a little on just the bottom. Just on the bottom, yeah. So now it's good there. It's good there. So yeah, so and it's good there. You look at this body line right here. It's the line right here. If you follow it through, it's smooth and it's even. So when you see that, you have good gaps between the panels. Now you can always feel by overlapping your fingers and just rub it all the way down. And you'll be able to feel if it's raised on one side or the other. And this right here is actually pretty good. Uh, the gap's a little tight, but I can fix that when I go to sand down a little bit, uh, or I can move the fender forward on the top. I don't know if I'm gonna do that just yet, but there is no contact from what I see. Nope, there's no contact. There's plenty, plenty of room. Oh, yeah, watch out for the dog. Oh, I know. Yeah, there's plenty of room right there, so. I don't know if you guys can see this. That's the edge of the door where my tip of the finger is. So it's this gap right here that we're looking at. So this gap's good. This gap's good. The alignment this way is what I'm looking for. And then the alignment on this 
And obviously this I didn't change. This is good. But this right here really doesn't matter because the panel that goes here is glued or taped onto this. It's like double tied to tape that we will we'll use to yeah, and secure it right here. The panel that's that is like this wide and it goes all the way down. Yeah, so it'll cover all this stuff. Uh, not too bad. Actually, didn't take much at all. Mm -mm. We are gonna do the other side off camera. That's gonna be, we just have to align the fender to make sure it matches this. Obviously, we're gonna be using the same paint sticks. <laughs> to be able to make sure we get the same gap on the hood on both sides, and then we'll align the fenders the same way. Now we do have to put the other fender on, we'll do that. Now this corner here, we still have to do a washer, so to raise this just a little bit up, so that you can use shims like that with like metal washers. Yeah. Put you up here real quick. That's just a cheat that we use. You know, and this is one thing that we wanted to show you is we're not professionals by any means. I am not a professional. I'm not a body paint guy, but I, I know like what to look for. <laughs> she knows what to look for because she's done she's I've done, done the business for, for a while. Years. Me, I absolutely love to work on cars. I love to work on my own cars ever since I was before I could actually have a driver's license. I worked on cars, so let's put it that way. Uh, back when there were steam engines. <laughs> I don't I know. Anyways, uh, you know, I hope this guy's helpful for you, especially if you get any kind of body kit, how to align your body panels. Even if you have a misalignment from the factory, it's really simple to align. It's, it's common not for that the factory hard. to have the panel just off a little bit. It's allowed. It's not a safety issue, it's not gonna leak, it's just uh, you're allowed a gappage to a certain extent. Yeah, they, um, they put out a lot of vehicles uh sure. on a daily basis they can't sit there and spend all day on one vehicle making sure everything's perfectly aligned they do have gauges but they it's like a range so say you have a value between one and five it can be in between there so you got to remember and i have told many people this from the body shop theater mass produced on the assembly line thank you for it but it's not like a uh, Bugatti Veyron yeah, or Bugatti right. or a Pagani it's, or a whatever where yeah. it's built by a team, one vehicle on a jig, at a time. On a jig. Yeah. So they, that's why they're so expensive because they take all that time and make sure every micro management is perfect. That's what the money is for. If you've ever seen a bare carbon fiber supercar or hypercar, you'll understand the amount of time it takes to get all that carbon fiber aligned. Now I'm talking, they are absolutely immaculate. They don't do this for this. No. This is not a three, four, five million dollar hypercar. This is a anywhere from 35 to $65,000 vehicle. You're not going to see that quality or that craftsmanship in there. Is it a good car? Yes. You are going to see some issues, maybe gaps or something like that. A little bit of misalignment. And even in the paint, you're going to see some orange peel from factory. That common. We have orange peel all over our truck, but you got to remember you're paying for a vehicle that everybody can afford not something that only very few can afford like mm. the hypercars and the supercars you're paying i wish i could afford one i know subscribe right? <laughs> maybe i can but i just want to clarify that because i had a lot of people when we fixed our cars from the body shop complain about the alignment of the panels the gappage of everything and i have to keep telling the story over and over and over so i just want to put it out there when you go and look at your own vehicle, it doesn't matter if it's a Dodge, Chevy, Ford, Mitsubishi, whatever. Whatever it is that's made by a mass manufacturer on the assembly line, they're going to have gap issues. They're not going to be 100% perfect. You're paying for the package. You're not paying for the craftsmanship, and you're not paying for the guys that are so anal on details 
to have it yeah. spot on perfect. So just keep that in mind when you look at a car, okay? So, like she was saying, these are mass-produced cars. So you, on a year, they probably produce about 50,000 of these, if not more. Yeah. Um, for a, say for instance, a million dollar hypercar, they may produce 50 of them, and that's it. Because they have a team designated for the dash, the gap panel, the carbon fiber to paint. I mean, there's separate teams that do yeah, this, and so that's their specialty. Yeah. So, to fix some of these issues is really simple for us and you guys. You know, I hope you guys use it to, especially if you have a small issue with the gaps. Yeah. It's really simple to fix. It's really simple to fix. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to take off the fender. We just did it because we needed to loosen that, because we needed to push in this, because it was making contact with the fender. If it wasn't yeah. for the fender, I could do it without And it's very issues. common for aftermarket parts to not fit 100%. I mean, they're going off, for, you know, after, they're going off of a mold that's close to OEM with altercation, because it's been altered. But with these, especially the fiberglass, you're gonna have to do a little bit of sanding, a little bit of shaving, and even some of the plastic stuff that we used in the body shop, we had to modify it just enough to make it fit. I do have to say though, so far, so far, this is probably one of the best fitting body kits or body panels I've ever put on a vehicle. My other ones I've done a lot of modifications to. Uh, this right here, it's not a whole lot. There are minor sanding that I have to do to make sure the alignment's good, or you know, there's a little bit of uh, like the edges right here is a little bit uneven. But right now, it's just minor sanding. There is no major work. There is no you know yeah. reconstruction or anything major like that. Cuttings. Like I've had to do on the past. My race car had a body kit on it, a Buddy Club body kit and veil side that I had to modify somewhat to get it on here. This right here is actually pretty damn nice. Uh, and modifications actually, are great for two, well, for at least one reason. You learn how to fix it. You get to learn what you're dealing with and how to fix it. And I really like this kit because look at the body line, they match perfectly. Yeah, they do. They are um, spot on. Good job, Advanced Fiberglass Concept. You did great. Now that we have this all set up, we do have the fender liner to put in, but we're gonna do that on a later video, um, as well as we are gonna turn the vehicle around and put the rear quarter panel on the other side on. We'll show you the process of that on a Different next video. week's video. Uh, it's not gonna be right now because that is a whole nother process of taking off that whole section. Uh, we'll go through that, remove the fender, which is going to be a trick to us. And, and the then, field doors on that side too. And then we'll go through installing it at the next video after that. Uh, we don't want to do both videos because they are going to be a little bit longer. Um, but, you know, hope you guys like this. Hope you guys subscribe. Hit the notification bell to see what's next for the kit. Uh, rear fender, we do have the grill to put on and make sure everything's aligned. There's a lot to this. If you do plan on doing this yourself, it's not super it's, hard. Yeah, it's, it's just, you gotta consuming. be careful and time consuming. Yeah. Just be patient. Just have a lot of patience. Body work is not to be rushed. No. You can't have it fast and have good quality. If you do a... Uh, if you do a fast body work or a incomplete body work or sanding or anything like that, it's going to show through no matter what good paint job you put on it. Especially black. <laughs> the paint job or the body work will make the paint job look absolutely beautiful if you have a good base for the body work and then have good paint. It's, it's really... It's, it goes hand in hand. Yeah. You yeah. have to have your prep surface be perfect for the paint to look good. Yeah. So we're going to go through that. We're going to go through that. 
after we get all the panels on, we'll go through and remove the panels, trim and sand the edges as we need it, and go from there. Once we send this off, we are going to uh, do some other modifications with this, as well as her vehicle, as well as Diesel's vehicle. We have stuff for that too, so. Yeah, Ben's almost done, but. Yeah, a little bit. We keep but, adding little things here and there. <laughs> anyways, uh, please like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and hope to see you next video. Bye. Bye.